No black cats, just straight facts. Triple P certified. Listen, we can talk about odds all day. It doesn't matter what the odds are. It matters what's gonna happen. Welcome to the Perfect Play Pursuit. It is I, your host, Lukey CK, uh, joined as always by my brother, Alex, the Euro Under King, and my best friend, Dan, uh, Devil's Advocate Dan. Uh, we're in the heat of battle, boys, and as you can see, we all lost some troops last week, and, you know, I'm not proud of it. I'm not uh, I'm not sitting here blaming the fact that every single favorite won. I'm not, I'm not doing that because at the end of the day, the bet that I came on here and told you was the easiest bet you ever needed to make, Islam Makachev plus 100 by decision, uh, but by submission did occur. And that was the last fight of the night. So I am sitting here with no excuse. We'll get into it. We'll recap last week's card and then we'll break down next, next week's card. We're going to get super ahead of the odds and the lines on uh, Alex Perez versus Tetsuyo Tiara. Um, we hate Alex Perez. We'll talk about that. And uh, we already gave you a mob all first cannon here. We'll, we'll go over that with a little fine tooth comb at the end and let you know what we think um has changed you know in our hearts thoughts and minds but other than that guys i'm gonna just let these two talk for a little bit because i'm i'm kind of melancholy i'm you, you know i'm not melancholy because there's some I, I have some personal wins i have some personal losses we'll talk about all of them let me check in with the boys first dan how's it going i'm doing well uh kept it simple this week okay one little bet ten dollars on the line ended up hedging on the eventual loss which was the second to last leg of it Alex Morono looking like possibly the worst, the worst you could look in a UFC octagon. I mean, I'm I'm showing friends who aren't UFC people. They're looking at this guy, Alex Morono. He looks like Plato in there, moving in mud, as I think Joe Rogan aptly put it. And uh, yeah, the onus is always on the better. Just Should have been, the been an overplay. Context. When Dan says he kept it simple, um, you know, Dan placed two bets in his open bet sheet um if you guys are just returning to the show after a while what we're doing in year five is we've all started this year with a thousand dollar bankroll and we are trying to finish the year obviously with our bankroll multiplied exponentially but uh we have a little competition going in year five that's why you're seeing dollar signs and not pick percentage next to our names just now but all of that is still in the open bet sheet dan bet lima hafez matthews almedia Brown, Morono, and Holland, ten dollars to win one hundred and four dollars, a ten x parlay, as he was saying, and he said he hedged out on Morono uh, on Nico Price, I guess, um, the one leg of the parlay that lost, he hedged on for break even. So Dan is uh, playing very conservatively in year five. Um, you know, he's conservatively lost one hundred and seventy five bucks, it seems, but he is, you know, each week just very tight. He's not using the Titanic method or that you usually would see him do, I guess, but. Um, Alex, you know, obviously is just, he's down the most right now. Uh, me, I was actually, I, I'm really down the most because I took my initial thousand up past 2000 and then decided I was going to bet half of my entire bankroll last week, uh, betting, you know, $1,200. Um, we'll get into where I went wrong, where I went right. But I, you know, I, I now I'm back down under past the original thousand. It's fine. It's all good. I'm going to reset like Kamaru Usman. I'm going to get back in for round two and I'm going to, I'm going to keep swinging. That's all I can do. It's so early. It's so early. You guys are making these outrageous, outrageous, not bets, but well, money, I, I think it goes money down put it on the line. Again, at the end of it. Uh, so here, let's really talk about this. Got the let's whole flush, year. Let's flesh this out a little bit. So first, Alex, you know, you were saying in the group chat, you were saying, this is making me go a little crazy because it's kind of every week because we set. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, the rules are, we all start season five with a thousand dollar deposit. First person to lose all one thousand dollars has to give the other two two hundred dollars immediately. Okay, as a penance, hundred dollars to both guys left in the race. If one of the other two loses their thousand dollars, they have to then give another hundred to the winner. The person who was already out gives another hundred to the winner. So you stand to lose three hundred dollars if you're the first one out. You stand to lose a hundred dollars if you're the second one out. Um, plus, obviously, your thousand, but that's all you will lose throughout the entire year five. Because if you lose your thousand dollars, you're only allowed to bet your perfect parlay a uh, ten dollar bet on every fight that you picked that week as a parlay, or a trophy certified pick, or a free bet. I'm going to add that in there too. Because this weekend, I thought about it, I was like, well, what happens if you bet a free bet? 
that, like that obviously doesn't come out of your bankroll. So then I thought, well, what happens if you get a free bet if your bankroll is done? So, I can't with a clean conscience say I'm going to not bet if I lose all a thousand dollars. Alex, you have to. <laughs> I can't. I can't with a clean conscience say that. Well, first of all, listen. If you do it, your conscience won't be clean. You'll have to come clean and admit your. Sins. I'm going to do it and come clean. I'm going. You no, know, I'm telling you. All right, well, well, you know, it's it's almost like this, right? Here's where my mind goes, right here, right now. You know, I set this up to make us better at gambling. Um, I set this up to make us have increased stakes so that the floor is lava, essentially, right? I wanted to make the floor lava. And I wanted to open our minds and essentially take a high dose of LSD in the form of just completely blowing the lid off our whole shit and going like complete monk mode, right? Like this is the equivalent of like no fap, where if you think about it, guys, you know, a thousand dollars divided by 52 weeks in a year is less than $20 a weekend. If you're going to like, you know, say I'm going to bet an even amount every weekend, right? So Dan wants to laugh at me for betting the sum amount, but he still managed to bet over $20 himself. Uh, many of these weekends, right? So it's it's not like he's doing it exactly how you should do it if you well, want. Well, there's a difference between betting $20, betting $100, and betting $700. Well, listen, this is all – you really don't know, Dan. You're talking as if, like, you've already kind of written the book on gambling, like you're Billy fucking I'm, like, I'm just saying, it, you're you're betting 70% of your bankroll. But here's what I'm you don't listen, understand, I'm not putting myself you out there as Billy really Swift or whatever the, the right, gambling guy I'm is. I'm glad we're talking about this, but why don't you just have an open mind and uh, appreciate the fact that we're having a conversation about this and learning as gamblers. Folks in the comments can obviously chime in, but the reality is this is my fifth year ever gambling. I'm still learning and I have an, a white belt forever mindset around this sort of thing. So even though I do know high level statistics and probability math, even though I probably could have been an actuarial scientist in another life, I personally, personally am choosing to back up and say to myself, okay, so Dan wants to say that it's irresponsible to bet 70% of your bankroll in a single night, but here's how I look at it. And I also want to get into Alex's perspective on it, which I think I've psychoanalyzed like Sigmund Freud. So <laughs> I'm trying to say, Dan, is that what this has allowed me to do is have a safety net to play progressively, right? So I'll give you an example. I start with $100, right? And if I lose that 100 I can now play sort of progressively to win back my 100 with a bigger threshold of what I'm allowed to bet in a single night that I've ever had, which leads and that's to Alex. what I've been doing. Yes, yes, yes. So me and Alex have a similar kind of like masculine alpha male <laughs> perspective refuse on to the lose. matter, which is like, refuse to I'm going to refuse to lose. I, big headed. Is, no, 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 not, not big headed. No, it, it, it's like, <laughs> um, no, it's, it's what it actually is, is I say, okay, we're playing a game. And in this game, I want to win the most money, but the way to win the most money is not by, exposing yourself to the most opportunity to lose it's by targeting your enemy at the heart having as little battles as possible to take out the king and like chess like jujitsu get to the end goal without expelling a lot of energy you know what i mean i'm but so luke you're asking me to not luke, bet a thousand dollars but your argument is null and void because you got to that mountaintop you had two thousand dollars all you had to do is play Alex. four corners defense like Dan is all, no, 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 no. all right, Dan's listen, playing like he has a lead. <laughs> we're interrupting each other. And I do have a lead. This is all very important stuff that the audience does need to benefit from. So let's slow it down a bit. But what I'm trying to say, Alex, is you are right. The only thing I had to fucking do was bet all 2,000 on Islam by submission. The one bet at the best odds that I was most confident in. That is the bet that actually paid out. That's the bet that actually worked. That's the one that actually won. Somehow, I let myself talk myself out of dumping all of my money on that because I saw he had staph infection, because I saw that it was on Lafayette Street. All these stupid ass fucking things that mean nothing in reality. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? It's Luke like all this stupid bullshit. Two, two, three weeks before the fight, I said confidently and clearly, holy shit, Islam versus Dustin. Islam free by money. Submission. I said free money. Islam by submission is free money because why? Father's plan. Father respected Dustin Poirier. It was the fight that Khabib got to bring his father to in Abu Dhabi. They built the stadium for him. Dustin was absolutely respectful. Mr. Nurmagomedov loved Abu Bakar. What was his name? What's his name? Abdul the Map. Abdul, Abdul the Map. Abdul the Map. Abdul the Map. And I say that all, with all respect. But, uh, you know, it's like Kizzy <laughs> Mops. You know, it's, it's like Vladimir, the janitor, Matryoshenko, right? But so, uh, you know, he's the coach, right? He's, he's there. I'm saying Abdul the Map. Nurmagomedov was delighted with the experience that was Khabib fighting Dustin. And therefore, if we listen with our ears and go, 
Khabib said, I didn't want to break Justin Gaethje's arm in front of his parents. Khabib, right? Khabib said, it's actually haram to beat people up. So in it's actually better as, as Muslim athletes if we don't uh, cause unnecessary damage and be so good. This is how they look at it. It's not, oh, I'm a little pussy, Damian Maya. I don't want anybody to get hurt. No, it's let's be so fucking good that we can control it to that level of a degree with the technique and the game plan. And that's why they all get so fucking frustrated with Islam and with these guys, like even Khabib when he fought Ally Aguinta, and they're yelling at him, take this guy down, do father's plan, what are you doing? But here's the reality, guys. Just like our little cousin who was never allowed to play violent video games or eat candy and then he eats all the candy at the party and then throws up because he's never been allowed to have it and he can't control himself just like your buddy whose parents were super fucking you know super helicoptery and then as soon as he got that one night out he went fucking ham right it's like khabib and all these guys are super militant super disciplined when you give them the fight itself that is their fun that's their rum springer and a lot of the time it's their one opportunity to break the rules a little bit and have fun right and 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 have a little fun right and uh, that that involves striking, being a badass, being a warrior, being, you know, um, a blood and guts like guy and striking. And here's my thing, right? The fight, the main event, I should have bet all 2000 on Islam by submission. However, I was also pretty. Con- yeah, so anyway, that, that's all I'll say. That's all I'll say. I learned my fucking lesson and it will never happen again. I will. Fu- I promise you guys I'm going to take this 936. I'm going to be patient with it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I have. The, the the bet in my sights. And by the way, what did I say to you guys? I said, it's Michael Chandler. It's Michael Chandler over McGregor because the last time McGregor fucking fought, he broke his leg. He hasn't fought in three years. And the last time he won, it was in a, in a minute that he fought Cowboy Cerrone. And guess what? Cowboy Cerrone stinks and is retired. And that night, McGregor didn't really get any good honest cage time. And since then, he's gotten his ass whooped by everybody. And he's done nothing but make movies, hang out with women on his yacht and have fun. He's not done it. How can he get better at doing it? Chandler has done it. So I sit here and I say this. It's the most obvious thing in the world. When you bet on Michael Chandler, you take him at even money odds, you bet your whole bankroll on it, and 1,000 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64, 64 to 128. And that's that. And we're done. We're in. We're out. We're paying the tax, and we got a 100K bag, and we put it in the fucking cryptocurrency, and we, we go on the island, baby. That's it. Guys, it doesn't take a lot of money to be rich. It does, but it doesn't. You know what I mean? It does, but it doesn't. <laughs> It does inflation, but it also doesn't, you know what I mean? Passive income. Like you got to just get a couple bags and uh, we're chasing that first bag. But Dan will sit there and tell you that he's going to take that 834 all the way to 50K for a down payment on a nice house for himself by the end of year five by betting pennies and crumbs. Dan couldn't have got a down payment last weekend. If everything went according to plan, he would have been out there with a hundred fucking bucks. So <laughs> yeah, but then, listen, listen, listen. You're, you're taking it. No, 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 you're looking at it in a vacuum. You're looking at it in a vacuum because, yeah, some weeks I'll keep it simple. And then some weeks, like you're saying, when I feel that the time is right, but I will why? strike as well. There but you're just striking every-, every weekend. You can't strike every weekend. Here's my thing. You can strike every weekend because there's a deal in any market. There's a deal in any market, okay? No matter what the card is, there was a deal. Last week, every favorite fucking won. You're telling me there wasn't a deal? The That's main not true, I- actually. Uh, Islam submitted Dustin. What happened was – and by Nico the way, Price won, underdog. If you watched the fight, if you oh, – oh, that's right. Every favorite didn't win. Nico Price won. Oh, okay. All right. It makes me feel better. Um so what I'm trying to say is, and I did hedge on Nico Price, by the way. I had Morono in several parlays too, and I wasn't feeling very confident for the all the same reasons that I said on the show. I said, life's not fair. Nico Price is the type of guy to go out there and get 10, 10 babies, and Alex Morono is the type of guy to sit at home and watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and do everything right and then still get beat by Nico Price. You know what I mean? Twice. So Al- let me say this about Alex Morono. This is all very important stuff that needs to be said. Alex he just take it Morono- last minute. He took it last minute. He was no. He was the one who was supposed to fight somebody else. Nico Price took it last minute. No, no. Morono was last minute. That really doesn't actually change what I'm going to say though, which is that Alex Morono, the type of guy to like really. I've seen interviews where he's really talked about like. And guys, let me say this: I like Alex Morono. Alex Morono, I like you. So don't push it. If you get super <laughs> upset about what I'm about to say, I won't like you. So let's just keep it civil. Because I'm going to say a lot worse about somebody I like a lot more and who's been a lot nicer to me than you. I don't even know you. Um, spoiler alert preview for what's to come. Oh, so, I'm ready for that. Can we just hop over to that? Alex Morono, I've seen him on interviews talk about the importance of like showing his students that like what he teaches them works by like going into the UFC and doing it. 
Alex Murdo, there's a good case to be made that everything successful that's ever happened to you in your UFC career is the result of fucking luck. <laughs> you think so? The result of fucking luck. Like, uh, oh, that's your takeaway? <laughs> because he doesn't fight with good technique. Uh, he doesn't make good decisions. You know what I mean? If you, if you look at it from like a true like martial arts point of view, like like for example, right? If you take a kid off the street and he goes into the gym with any discipline and does some of the things Alex Moreno had did and done in that fight, I'll give you two examples. Sacrificing position to go for a sloppy submission. Now, I wrestled in high school. If I went out on the fucking wrestling mat and I threw a sloppy headlock, a high percentage, high risk, high reward move in wrestling, also kind of known as a lazy fucking move, meaning a move you don't have to set up, something that you just sort of just... Uh, you it's know, a heavyweight like, move. Yeah, aesthetically, it's what you what somebody who doesn't know how to wrestle does with their brother just instinctively on the couch. You know what I mean? It's not really like something you even need to teach somebody. And yeah, like you said, fat asses in high school who are fat asses do it to each other. You know what I mean? And who else does it? The lady fights. Who, who do we who do we see? Oh, Perez, head and arm throw. Oh, whoa, we haven't seen that a trillion times in women's MMA. And then what happens? Uh, Jocelyn Edwards with the cheapest little reversal and then she does the same exact little cheap reversal back i mean that was a, a two dollar fight you know what i mean that was a two dollar fight and we had three rounds of it you know what i mean because everything was just so cheap it was it was so oh no setup required high risk high reward easy to do your opponent has to be a vegetable for you to be able to even they have to be asleep at the wheel entirely right and morono i mean he's going for guillotines where it's like i mean it's like brendan Schaub when he got knocked out by ben rothwell he's go, he's like <laughs> like that's how Moreno looks flopping on his back going for these guillotines. Looks like he's already knocked out going for these sloppy little guillotines. So it's like there's no excuse if you took a fight that you uh were not prepared for because you like were what you're not prepared for it, you're not prepared to do it, you don't have the cardio. That's on you too. Do you understand? Like these guys think that it's like, oh well, I just no, that's even worse. That's like your personal life was all fucked up. And then you made a personal bad decision out of greed to take money. Wait, I needed the money. Okay, so then you needed the money because you made other bad decisions that left you being irresponsible. It's, it's all bad. You can't wiggle out of this. It's irresponsible. The kids shouldn't listen to you. The kids should go to another school. You know what I mean? They should go to <laughs> another school because you are out here throwing punches with a form that if, if a 14-year-old kid went into a boxing gym or a kickboxing gym or a Muay Thai gym or any gym, and threw punches like Morono does, the coach would say, fuck is wrong with you. Slap. Put your hands up and get your hands up and keep your hands up and throw your punches straight and throw your hooks hook and then and, and don't be all throwing everything like a freaking idiot. That's what they would say. And they'd be like, come on, man. Like, don't you want to do this? Or do you want to just fucking do it your way? Your way doesn't work. And if you're teaching people your way, that, that's the equivalent of me starting a school called the headlock school where I teach you how to do headlocks and I teach you how to throw an overhand right. And I and, and and that's it. That's all you need to know, guys. Headlocks and overhand rights. I hear you. I hate him. Um, now, oh, sorry, I said I, I went into saying I liked him, but I worked myself into a fervor where I now fucking hate you, Alex Morono. Um, <laughs> Let's get to the main event of your Because I did hedge on Nico Price, but then I fucking cashed out the hedge for... <laughs> and anyway, it's a stupid-ass thing I did. You can see in the open bet sheet in the Patreon, because I, I was very diligent with my open bet sheet this week, every dollar was recorded. Patreon.com slash Perfect Play Pursuit. If you want to see how I lost money last week, you can see how I'm going to win it back this week. Get in there. No guarantees. <laughs> not a doctor. Uh, not financial advice. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about. Um, we have a whole card to break down. If you want to see Kananir versus Amavolf, those picks are fucking already on the episode. We already broke it down. And also, the picks are in the open bet sheet in the Patreon. UFC Louisville, me, Alex, and Dan's picks all listed out nice and neat. So any changes that happen between now and then will go in there, too. And uh, the episode's already out for you. So we already talked about our breakdowns and everything. Um, this week, we got the breakdowns for the card after. We got to get ahead of these lines. I mean, they're they're getting out of control, and we will get ahead of these lines with a nice little offering that seems like, you know, you got a lot of these, uh, you got a lot of these guys from the ufc asia scene that are kind of aligned on this timeline where they like compete with each other on these same cards and you also have the guys they compete with like the nate manesses the adam fugits of the world you know mixed in with the jekka saragis and the tagir rulan beckoffs you know we got we got some stuff here we got some stuff here we gotta we gotta get through but before we do that there's a lot we gotta talk about um 
I'm really torn, man. Um, <laughs> all over the hold place. on. The anticipation is killing me. The fighter that you love. Dude, I, I that's said you had a criticism I of. So it's like, I'm torn, man. I'm really torn. So, like, I watched Joe Selecki's fight, and <laughs> the first thing that happens is Grant Dawson comes out thinking he's George Masvidal, right? Uh, and he's down there in Coconut Creek because he's a turncoat and left James Krause because he's, you know, not loyal. And it's fine, you know. He, so he leaves James Krause, goes to uh, Coconut Creek, and, you know, literally tries to do what George Masvidal did, like, thinking Joe Selecki's that dumb. Like, like as if Joe Selecki is Ben Askren, right? Um, disrespectful. See, Grant Dawson's the type of guy to, uh, he's the type of guy to, uh, what's the word? What's the word, Alex? Like, to, to throw a stone and hide his hand. You know what I mean? Grant Dawson's the type of guy to throw a stone and hide his hand, you know? Um, I know your true colors, Grant. And honestly, I'm not impressed by your performance, Grant. I'm even less impressed by Joe's performance. Um, <laughs> the takedowns that Joe got hit with do not represent the East Coast of the United States of America. I know Joe didn't wrestle in high school. I know Joe never has wrestled in his life. But if you're from the state of New Jersey, you don't get taken down like that. Um, guys, we say it on the show all the time. It's it's position over submission, okay? And if you have the high-level, competent grappling that we know Joe has, the pedigree that Joe has, ahead of the curve, ahead of the game, doing this shit before it was popular, doing the shit when you had to drive 45 minutes from your house to get to the closest jiu-jitsu school, and that's fucking great if that's his, if that's if that's what it is back in 1990 fucking nine or whatever it is when he started doing jujitsu. So my point is Joe's the man. I love Joe. You know what I mean? I'm always gonna love Joe. What he's done for this show, you know, we can't even put into words. But but what he did in the cage, I have to objectively give this audience a fair shake and say I was not pleased. I was not happy. The only good thing I can say is that guillotine in that first round was tight and it looked pretty good. But it's almost, I wish it almost didn't happen because that almost gives Joe the Dustin Poirier hope that he's going to fucking pull a guillotine and get a guillotine and submit somebody off of his back in the UFC in 2024. And this is not the Hoist Gracie era. This is not the Ronda Rousey era. This is 2024 mixed modern day mixed martial arts. And you cannot sacrifice submission for position. I thought we learned our lesson after the last fight with Jakar Close, who's a fucking bum. And Joe should have fucking easily dominated over the course of three rounds and possibly finished with a submission after cooking him. From a dominant position, from the top. I mean, Joe gets in there, he fights complacent. He fights like he's just happy to be there. He's on his back. He's he, he's acting like this is something to think about, like a learning experience. It's everything that I hate in fighters that I've bet on in the past, right? And I mean, I, I'm like, I'm trying to be real with you guys. I love Joe, but he does not fight in a way that that I can come here and tell you guys is the way that I would do it. You know what I mean? So, see, I thought Joe won that fight. If anything, maybe a split, a split draw with that with that cut in the first round. He could have won that first round ten eight. Uh, so, you if know, anything... the first round, I'll give you the first round. You know, he 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 had. If we're looking at it, catch twenty two, you're sorry and shit. If we're looking at it, you're sorry and you know, if we're saying, hey, every time you get on one of them planes, you're as close to death as you've ever been. How old must you be? It's like Joe brought the fight closer to it being finished than Grant ever fucking did. So, yeah, in that case, and did more damage than Grant did in round one. So, yeah, give him round one. But at the end of the fucking day, I was really, you know, I took Joe by submission at 11 to 1. I mean, you know what I mean? Or maybe it was even more than 11 to 1. It might have been 22. It was big time, like, underdog. Guy. It was disrespectful. And I said, you're not going to disrespect Joe like that. So, I, I was cheering when I when he had that guillotine. I was, I was like elated and then you know even when he didn't get it i was like okay we're good here we're good like this is fine but then that takedown that happened later after that round i mean it looked like joe had just joe looked wor- okay caesar almeida has an excuse to get taken down in some of the ways he did and he still gave roman Kopolov like at least a run for his money one took it to a split decision right caesar almeida is five and oh and has only ever uh, <coughs> instruct he doesn't know a lick of wrestling so Caesar Almeida has an excuse. Roman Coppola or uh, Alexander Romanov has no excuse for the way he got dragged to the mat like a bitch by a fucking Jalton Almeida. Has no excuse. You know, I mean, Joe Selecki isn't a fucking whatever Moldovan wrestler. You know, he's never wrestled. So he has a little bit similar to Almeida. But here's what I'll say. Hey, Joe, you're spending a lot of time with Chris Wybin. Has he, he's an All-American, right? I think last time I checked, it seems the All-American. Maybe he can help you with the takedown defense. I don't know. I mean, unless we want to be on our back, which in which case nobody can help you. In which case, if we want to be on our back, hey, 
I can then, then hey, then what am I gonna do? Well, I'm, I'm gonna exit stage left. Well, you know, I disavow everything he said about Joe Selecki. You know, I'm hoping Joe gets another crack at it. Uh, bad fight, but you know, is what it is. I ended up winning a bet on the night. It was Sean Strickland and Islam Makachev by submission. You want to that... just wait, so damn, what is what, you want to just go right all, along like to that? Like, we've had Joe on the podcast five times. All of our audience, we should be certified him. We should be certified him, even though you know. I was a little bit, I was kind of like, hey, this is going to be a close fight. I mean, Dan, what do you think, Mr. Not Afraid to Mince Words? <laughs> um, yeah, no, not a good fight. Uh, I had Say It Ain't So, Joe, in my head a lot of the time watching that. Um, I don't know, man. I, uh, I, like you, was excited during the opening minutes of the first round. I thought the guillotine was pretty tight. Um at the same time, you know, the mindset was Grant Dawson's head probably going to pop out. You know, great wrestler, power wrestler. I was hoping for a little bit of a, a better game plan. Maybe keep it, like, keep it with the striking. Like, outstrike the guy. Do your, like, fight like hell to not take it to the mat, if anything. Unless it's super advantageous, like you see an opening or whatever. But outstrike him. You know, Grant Dawson has had... Sorry there. Uh, some right. moments where he seems pretty susceptible with the striking game. As yeah, like, a, when uh, is Grant Dawson Alex per fucking era? Like he's yeah. Grant Dawson. He got knocked out by Bobby Green last time out. Who you know what I mean? Like couldn't put away Jim Miller. So it tells you a lot. It's like listen, I love Bobby Green, but I'm just saying Grant Dawson got slept quick in his last fight, and Joe's acting like you, you know what I mean, like happy to go to the ground with him as if this is fucking. Animal. And look, Joe's like, Joe's not known to have you know, the best boxing in the Dude, world. He but... like, I, I, I came on this show after Joe put on that jab fest. And I said, before he took the fight, I said, look, Joe has a good base. Joe has a stiff jab. He's got the three. He's solid. Takedown. He's solid. I said, he looks like GSP sometimes in there with the fucking jab and the takedown and, and the fucking jujitsu and everything, you know? And it's like, where was any of that? You know what I mean? Where was any of that? And I, I'm not, I don't care. Money lost is money lost. I'm more, I'm mad at the philosophy. I'm mad that this is a big problem. You know what I mean? And in terms of like, I personally feel that Joe needs to want to hurt these guys a little bit more. Joe needs to, no, Joe needs to get a little bit pissed off. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And maybe this will do it. You know what I mean? I'm a, we're, you know, like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I, I, I obviously wanted Joe to win. I will be certified Joe. I love Joe. Um, but it was disheartening not to watch because of the complacency, because I'm watching somebody who looks to me like they don't give a fuck about being there. And I'm like, wh what is going on? I'm like, I can't endorse that. You know what I mean? I, 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 and then afterward, Joe's talking about God has different plans. God had nothing to do with that. That was on you. That, that wasn't God. God says, man shall not lie with man. And you were lying with man on your back. And you, you were, you, you know, Jail Sonnen said it best. I'm a fucking Republican. I do not do jujitsu laying on my back with some guy in my open guard. I love the balls on my mouth. It's comedic gold. Like I, like the fact that I could even in real time set up the joke, realize I have the content to self-produce in real time. Guys like sign up for the Patreon. Give me a hundred dollars for that little moment right there. hundred bucks right now, full year, $100. Get in there. Jiu-jitsu is two guys making love, and one of the guys midway through realizes he's not gay. Did you guys see the uh, clip about how dance is more masculine than jujitsu? The guy was like, you know, when I'm dancing, when I go out dancing, I have to be masculine because I'm around all women. But when two people do jujitsu, there's an element of, like, the masculine and the feminine. Like, you have to create chaos, and then one's creating order, and you're simultaneously, like, creating chaos, and then creating order, and it's just, like, dance of, like, you know, the yin and the yang. And, uh, and he's like, and I'm like, I agree with him. You know what I mean? I get what he's saying. He has a fundamentally sound argument. Um, you know, but still like try to, when, when, uh, terrorists break into the bar, you and your girlfriend are drinking at, uh, and, or, or take it down a notch. I mean, when some loud mouth pulls you off your bar stool and slaps your girlfriend on the ass, try to dance your way out of that situation. That's all I'll say. You know, it's like, 
I'm gonna fucking spike his head into the fucking bar bar mat if he fucking does that to me. You know what I mean? And you know, I'll say this. That. Uh, what? I said, but jujitsu don't teach you that. <laughs> yeah, it does. Jujitsu. If you go by the Gracie way, there are takedowns in jujitsu. But either way, I'm just saying, like, I'm gonna, you know, I'm like, I'm gonna. I'm going to confidently pick somebody up and slam them on the ground knowing I know jujitsu, so I don't need to worry about them submitting me. Don't go on the ground ever in a fight, ever. In a, in a street fight. And Michael Jacek will be able to tell you that because he blew it. He screwed the pooch. He didn't blow he was, it. He was looking great on his feet. He didn't he lose because he didn't tap. He did he, not he lose because he didn't tap. That was absolute bullshit. Herb Dean is a fucking shill con artist, con man. Smoking on that gas. Herb Dean smoking on that gas. Now, I wouldn't make those assumptions, but... I don't give I, a fuck. I, That's fucking illegal. I will say Herb Dean absolutely killed my vibe. I, I had a lot of shit sunk on Michael Ola J check. That's why I had to make that 250 risky bet on Sean Strickland and Islam Makachev by submission. That was high risk, low reward. It sucked. But it ha I had to get closer to even than I was if, if, if I didn't do that because I would have been in far worse straits, boys. Far dire straits if, if I didn't pull that one off. Michael Lejacek, uh getting armbarred by Kevin Holland and Herb Dean running in there for no reason at all. There was no tap. It, it, like – Alistar Overeem had a clearly felt a better tap than Kevin Holland in that situation. I have no idea what we're watching. Lord had the worst case scenario of all time. Not only did he lose the fight, he got his arm broken when he didn't even tap. So he takes the risk of breaking his arm, saying, "Okay, I'm just gonna jock races of this." I like. I already like know I can rock him on the feet. If my arm breaks, it breaks. I'm going to stay through this. I mean, he was moving the arm afterward. It didn't look broken to me. I would love to he see the hospital. He slammed against the ground in frustration. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see the you know him go to the hospital and see. Usually when this happens and like my guy is the guy who gets the submission and the ref stops it prematurely before there's a tap or the guy goes completely unconscious, it's like ruled a no contest and I – lose money on the situation but this time since i had all the money on michael J check we're just not even going to do anything about this we're not going to do anything about this at all herb dean is a clown he likes certain guys more than others and he always runs the fights for the guys who've been in the ufc longer that he has a better rapport with and michael J check just doesn't even have a name so he gets no respect in there it's number one bullshit, brother. He did not tap. He should have won that fight. And he was – all signs pointed to Michael Olszewczyk winning. I, I look at my girlfriend when Kevin Holland starts going for an armbar off his back. I said, what is this? Women's MMA? That shit ain't never going to work. And he gets armbarred and loses. Well, this is just, why Lord Michael has been one of my favorite fighters since we started this podcast, since I knew of his existence. Uh, you know, is he going to be a world title challenger even anytime soon? Probably not. I mean, he's a, he's somewhat borderline, but probably not. But his style is awesome. His mentality is awesome. He did rock Kevin Holland. He knocked him to the ground. That's how they got to the ground to begin with. Um, and to not tap when he clearly broke his fucking arm. So badass. And then and to not only not tap, but then be frustrated when the referee stops it. And again, you're just coming off of a broken arm. Ridiculously badass. That's what you want out of the fighter. Mike Davis, Lord Michael, uh, Nate the Train. These are my Alina guys. Perez. guys Alina Perez. With. Hey, Alina Perez, guess what? She took that headbutt, said, I'm fine, let's go, and then hit that yeah, spinning back. That was bit. another one. That was Pereira level cool. I mean, it just had a longer band of time between the foul and the, the I'm fine. Let me spinning hit back fist is the only significant strike in women's MMA that is ever thrown ever. They there's both, never yeah, there should, it should be a whirling dervish they should just look like use tasmanian dude, it should just look like the they bay all, blades. actually they should go in the they should go in there like bay blades just dude, spinning the no, entire time they the best base for women's mma is the pillow fight league you get into the pillow fight league, <laughs> learn how to fucking spin all around and hit and then it's basically the same maneuver to do a pillow spinning back fist or yeah dude i like this i like we're actually on to something um yeah all right well and those listen. two ladies in a pillow fight would have been sensational let me just you know, say that if you told me, um, hey, Luke, Alexander Romanov, 
Michael Olajacek, Joe Selecki, fuck Mary Kill. You gotta, uh, you know, you you got you gotta cut <laughs> one. You gotta cut one Roman off. But if you gotta cut two, it's not Lord. That's all I'm gonna tell you. It's not Lord. No. Well, I don't not. mimic that. I want to see people who want to fucking be there. I want to see people who want to fucking be there. I don't want to see complacency, no matter who it is. That tells me, hey, let's save them from themselves because they don't want to be here. Well, what do you it. think of your guy, Paulo Costa? What do you think about complacency with your guy, Paulo Costa? I fell asleep during the whole fight. So you want you want you fill me the fuck in because guess what, Paulo? <laughs> oh, you oh, oh. Block too. But, but at least Paulo came out and see Dan. Said, Dan, did I not call him out today? He said, you're up. Uh, you're up at 1.30 a.m. texting me. You're a junkie. <laughs> I'm like I, I just watch the fights. Uh, I don't know about you. I, I stay up. Junkie for texting me at one thirty. No, I said <laughs> you're embarrassing because this is anyway. Uh, we'll get into that later. But anyway, listen, you're not a junkie, and I am a bit of a sleepyhead sometimes. But I, I was yawning first fight of the night. I was fucking yawning. It was crazy. I was like, whoa, why am I so tired? And then I'm literally watching the main event start, and I oh, see like little some Luki, little, little rich kid. A little sleepyhead. Dude, some rich kid in the front row. He's like this little kid. He's like, oh, like, as the Poirier versus Makachev fight's about to start. And I'm like, bro, I feel you, dude. I'm like, he's he's there live. Dude, Donald Trump was doing better than all three of us. Me, that little kid, like, he, he was the best one of the three of us. He, he was viral as hell, you know? Hey, by the um, way, let's keep uh, let's keep politics out of sports, you know? I mean, uh, we've yeah, said that yeah. multiple times. Uh, no, the UFC is not sports. That's the difference. It's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> dude, my friend, my friend called me the other day and was like, you know, I, I wasn't a fan of the fights that night. Like they were a little boring, but I was not a fan of all the glorification of this Trump fella, you know? And I was like, uh, you know, you know, we don't got to talk about this. <laughs> I, was, I was like, this is, this is, we're, we're friends. We don't need to talk about this. You know, Dana White said if they went to Russia, he would give Putin the same treatment he gave Trump because he is a nice guy. <laughs> well, I think a Tim Dillon, I take a Tim Dillon esque approach. Hey, Putin's never asked me for a dollar, okay? Uh, so I appreciate that. <laughs> and also, uh, when it comes to you know um, Putin, Trump, your friend. What were you just talking about? Anyway, Paulo Costa, um, Luke. What about what about this Paulo Costa? He was on his bike the whole time. He came out and said, "Hey, I'm gonna get back to being the old Paulo. That's not me. Fuck that. I need to fucking fight better. I'm sorry. I you'll that won't happen again. Say no more. Hey, apology accepted. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan should have yeah. to go to court. Um, and oh, I don't that's care. What I was gonna say. Wait one second, Alex. That's what I was gonna say. Trump, your friend who didn't like seeing Trump there. It's like. Where was he's, Biden? He's a convicted felon. Where was Biden? I mean, like the very fact that Trump could even go and walk and down and high five people without catching fucking pneumonia is proof in and of itself that he's at least virile enough for a position. I mean, you got Dana White who's leading, you know, a gigantic conglomerate, and he's he's there and he's walking, and you got Trump and he's walking next to him, and he goes, "Yeah." You, you look at that, you go, two businessmen, you know, an AI would go. This appears to be a picture of two businessmen, you know, <laughs> and it's like, where was Biden? Where was where, where's anybody else? Like, what are they doing on a Saturday night? Sitting at home, sleeping, uh, managing the world. What does Donald Trump have to do? Not that because he's not the president. <laughs> OK, I, so so Dan, here's your chance. Here's your no, corner. No, no. <laughs> the liberal corner. We want to give we want to give all sides representation. So go ahead. Well, if you actually saw the these books back here, you'd know I'm not on that side. So you know that uh, you are the uh, resident Joe Biden supporter. I got I got nothing to say. I already said what I got to say. OK. And I told him, sweetheart, we're in some America where we have a convicted felon running against a guy with dementia. <laughs> I'm in my Bill Maher era, guys. I'm in my Bill Maher era, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think that uh, Paulo Costa was on his bike his whole the whole time. He got completely overwhelmed by Sean Strickland's output, which is, you know, kind of what I said. And a complete miscalculation on Paulo Costa's part, t- in the words of Jim Miller in the weigh-in show, I don't know if you saw that. He said, I think that was a miscalculation by Paulo Costa. He should have he should have made that sucker a three-rounder and pushed forward the entire time and been the bulldog that he is. But, you know, 
Sean Strickland five round fight that favors him more than anybody else. Sean Strickland's amazing. He walked through the fire. Joe Rogan should have to go to court, whether it's jury duty or to go to jail. He should just have to be in a court for a few days. I don't know for what. But whatever, whatever the jury decides, what, what do you do? He could be on the jury for all I'm con- for all I care. But he needs to spend. He needs to do some some Joe, due diligence. Joe, he, his, his, he needs to, to fulfill his civic responsibilities. Yeah. Exactly. We need to start forcing Joe Rogan to do things he does not want to do. His whole <laughs> thing is like, I get to do everything I want to do and get paid for it. We need to all band together as a as a global society and force Joe Rogan to do exactly the things he does not want to do. And do it for about a year to three years. I agree. How you. come I gotta pretend to be racist to get out of court, but Leonardo DiCaprio just doesn't get just doesn't have to go because he's Leonardo DiCaprio? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I would I would get out of it just by saying I had to work. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think you, that works. Maybe you, try that <laughs> maybe you can try that next time. I don't, I don't know. think that works. <laughs> works. I think they I think they say you got to get out of work. You, you got to hey, get out of work. Bro, in New York City, they're just surprised you showed up to even tell them anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to do it two or three times in New York. And every time I did it, I showed up and they're like, that's fine. Hey, that's fine. Thank you for coming. They're like, it's all right. The criminal didn't show up either. Weird. Yeah, we, up we told him he had to come in this day. Trial. You show up to the, you show up way in advance of the trial and say, I can't make it to the trial. I'm very busy. And they go, thank you yeah. for coming and letting us know. Trust me, once I walked in, they didn't want me. They were like, yeah, we don't want you on the fucking jury anyway. <laughs> I don't and, give a fuck. Um, but anywho, but nice. um, they, uh, Joe Rogan, terrible, terrible commentary. Every single time anybody throws any leg kick ever, Joe Rogan's like, ooh, that leg is mangled. Sean Strickland showed no signs of slowing down at all through the entirety of that fight. He checked more leg kicks than he got hit with, and every single time, Polo Costa even looked at Joe at a at a fucking Sean Strickland's leg. He was like, "Ooh, Sean Strickland is." You see, Sean Strickland's moving funny. Sean Strickland's changing stances. He's never done that before to cut off the cage ever in his life. Uh, Sean Strickland is limping hard. He doesn't just always walk like a fucking weirdo in the cage and have his hands held weird and and just does everything weird. Um, but yeah, Joe Rogan, I'm, I'm so sick of it. He, he had one good quote on the entire night, and that was when Aline Perez and, uh, you know, La Pantera gave, gave each other hugs at the end of the fight. He said, violence solves everything. To that, I say, you know, I disagree, but I like the quote. Weren't they saying that uh, the fight was kind of up in the air, that, like, Paolo could have won it? They're dumb. What? They're dumb. Joe Rogan within the lens. But then they were all up in arms when they had the, the two judges' scorecards completely different. Joe like, Rogan. The right, so the right response was that Sean Strickland dominantly won, but you said that Paulo could have won, so that would justify two judges having completely different scorecards. Joe Rogan is so dumb that in the last forty-five seconds of that fight, he says Sean's got to go for it here. Why? Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he just beat the shit out of him for five rounds. The fact that anybody gave Costa any round is appalling to me. I think it was. 50, 45, yeah. and maybe you could have given Sean a 10-8 Perfect. in one of those rounds because it was so dominant. He outstruck him on every single level. Shred, body, legs. Like, Sean was destroying him in that fight. Maybe not on all levels. He might have got hit. Not the legs. legs. Yeah. And in terms of who was giving me more of a boner, Sean wasn't Whoa. winning that. Sean wasn't winning that. I was asleep. I was asleep. So <laughs> just, I'm just making a joke. A wet dream. Yeah. Um, listen. Uh. Islam Makhachev, Dustin Poirier, Islam choked him out. It's bittersweet for me because I ended up not pulling the trigger on it. Um, Here's who I do want to say. I pulled the the trigger on it. I pulled the trigger on it. The the number one man of the night for me was Roman Kapalov. I placed a large bet on Roman. If you were in the open bet sheet, you saw it. um, 350 uh, to double it. And yeah, I mean, Roman was a plus 100 dog. I was like, this is absolute disrespect. You have a guy with an OV last name. Yes, not a wrestler, but does train in Dagestan, is working on his wrestling compared to um, Caesar, who is clearly not working on his wrestling. Like, it was crazy. The line was crazy. But even that fight went to a split decision. I don't agree with the split decision. I think Roman won two out of the three rounds at least, if not every round. But uh, Roman Kapalov, you are my hero. I love you. Um, you're the man. I'm going to keep betting on you. I bet on you against Fluffy Hernandez. That's how much faith I had in you. 
You had to get back to those amazing body kicks. You were lightning quick. You look like almost like Umar Nurmagomedov with those body kicks. You look better. You were amazing. Uh, your body kicks were katana speed. I want to see body kicks and I want to see elbows. Body kick when they catch the kick, elbow. Okay. Give me one of them next time, Roman. All right. You're the man. Love you. Good talk. Um, the thing that I hate about Islam versus Dustin. Dustin is from Louisiana. Dustin has never wrestled a day in his life. Dustin is, as Islam would say, a fake black belt. Islam had him in every fucking advantageous position jujitsu-wise and couldn't finish him. But here's what I'll say. I had $75 to win 1,200 on Islam third round submission, and he was on his back for two and a half minutes of that round. I yeah, was I mean, furious. Send me location of this guy if, if I'm you. You know what I mean? Send me location of this guy. But it's like <laughs> Islam. I mean, I, I really think I could get Dustin Poirier in a rear naked choke if you give me his back for that long. I really think so. Like, I mean, I mean call me crazy. Call me crazy. Um, we'll chalk it up to the new gloves, which I am blaming my percentage on this card for the new gloves entirely. I think this... I think there should be an asterisk on how much money I lost on this card. Would we just reset and- all our totals back to what they were the previous week? I, I think so. Know. Because, because I had no idea about these gloves. You can veto Dan 2-1 to one right now and reset the totals back to what they were and, and erase all conservatism <laughs> of Dan. No, <laughs> Maybe we should start at 1000 Dan, Dan. Dan gets 20 bucks back. <laughs> I get $1,000. <laughs> not conservatism. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> maybe we should just all start back at a thousand because with the with no! the new gloves, it's a whole no, new no, game. no, 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 with the new gloves, it's a whole new game. <laughs> now, now you have to get with Dan for that alliance, but I don't think he's gonna do it. So yeah, uh, let's do it. Two to one. Uh, we're gonna move on. No, Luke, you just heard it. You just heard it here first. We're back at a thousand, baby. We're uh, definitely not doing that. And Dan, shame on you. Come on, if if we do that, we're just gonna just. Uh, you know, if you guys want to just make last week's card our one mulligan card of the year, I'm down. Luke, it's the new gloves, man. It's a whole new He's game. I love how the new gloves are implemented to take out the, the finger pokes, the eye pokes. The first fight, there's like five. <laughs> I was like, this is poetic. I love this. I hate these guys. That's great. All right. Um, let's get into next week's card. I mean, listen, I, I, I did. I lost. 12 no, hundred. Phil Rowe sucks. Phil Rowe absolutely sucks. Yeah, um, I had to switch my pick. I had to switch it. Phil Rowe, he, he's so bad. Matthews. Glad I did it. Woo! Jake Matthews, like, who knew he was such an animal? If you're a young vet and an old man, and then game where men die young. Um, okay, so um, the... Islam, you're okay. You kind of stink, though. Costa, I accept your apology, but never again. Next time you got to knock somebody out, or I'm off you forever. Um, Holland, you're a punk bitch for life. Even though I picked you, I'm the only one who picked you. I don't like that win. I ended up not needing you to win and more so needing Lord to win in that situation. And you're a punk bitch and I don't like you. Uh, and I think you and Herb Dean were smoking blunts together after the fight. Um, Romanov, <laughs> punk bitch, bigger punk bitch, fat ass punk bitch. Learn how to hand fight. At, He's pulling at the elbow. Like, punk bitch. How dare Romanov in the pre-fight B-roll be talking about, I have a pet plan for the title. I'm going to be getting a title shot, title fight, title. Romanov. You can't even get a fucking win, dude. You can't get nothing. You're done. You're out. You're cut from the UFC. Um, and I think you should be put. I think Romanov should be put against the wall. That's what I'm gonna say. Um, Brown, <laughs> legally, like under a, a court order, he should be put against the wall. Firing squad, death penalty for that performance. It was really, <laughs> really death penalty for that performance. I, I hate him. I hate him. I hate. And yo, who is bigger on Romanov than me? I mean, you got this big fat fuck heavyweight King Kong hitting five five point throws, belly to belly to belly, belly to back suplex. And now look at him. Look how far you fall and look how far you've come. I don't give a fuck what your excuse is. You're done. You're out. You're done. I hate you. Um, Might I add, Alex was like, Romanov looking good on the scales. Woo! <laughs> I know. And I didn't even see him on the scales. I took Alex's word for it. Um, <laughs> he was. He was looking good on the scales. <laughs> Randy Brown, you stink too. Fuck you. Uh, Kapilov, mwah, mwah, mwah. chef's kiss. I love you. I'll kiss you. Mwah. He's good. Nice he's he's going to run. It was unanimous, Kapilov. It was unanimous. You're the man. Mwah. I love you. I love you, Roman Kapilov. I love you. Joe Selecki. <laughs> Uh, Jake Matthews, Coming as pro. Jake, Ma- Jake Matthews, eh, Jake Matthews, eh, you know, fine. Morono, 
boo shouldn't be allowed teachers teachers license revoked teachers license revoked put in jail put in jail for da- damaging children put in jail for negligence uh they, boo boo romanov jail jail for romanov not firing squad 10 years in jail morono morono for morono romanov firing squad morono 10 years in jail uh teachers license revoked when he comes back he's not to be within 100 yards of a school or a child uh hafez i could have finished mickey gall quite literally mickey gall great fight. Great no, no, fight. here's what i'll say here's what i'll say great fight mickey gall impressed me more than hafez did you know you come back from a back surgery you come back from that long of a layoff this is a game that yeah. demands activity you don't get better at something by not doing it you don't get better at something by getting sexual and financial gratification from the gas digital network by having your fat libertarian friend tell you how you know you're cool all the time you don't get it you don't get better from that shit happening what you get is worse and what hafez should have done is finish him especially after he's licking his lips looking at him like a lizard in the first round like he's got reptile brain he's like <laughs> he's like about to fucking speak in tongues and go at him like he's possessed and i'm like i remember i texted you guys i was like i'm like yeah hafez knows that mickey gall shouldn't even be in there with him right now it's a matter of time well it was a matter of time 15 fucking minutes basil hafez i had you by finish because your line was so blown out outstretched and bullshit and you almost got yourself finished in the end at the end of the day you should have had better cardio than mickey gall at the end of the day you should have finished mickey gall at the end of the day i don't like the looks of it oompa loompa i love Eileen perez uh <laughs> the only I like on this entire card, I, I liked Roman Kapilov and Aline Perez. The only two people I liked on this entire card. I liked La Pantera too. She did great. Who? La Pantera. Jocelyn Edwards? Yeah, she did great. She did an amazing job. That was the, the Boomba Clapa fight great. of the night. All right, yeah. It was fine, but you know, I'm just gonna say this. Okay. Oh, and then there was some guy, guys. I wanted to bring this up. I picked Amavov last week. You guys picked Kananir. And, you know, when asked, there was no line out. I'm like, what do you guys, what would you put the line at? And Alex, you were like, you know, plus 190 or whatever. And uh, and he goes, I'm very confused. You say Jared is the pick here, but that he should be a massive underdog at plus 180. Are you messing with us? And <laughs> I said plus 110. <laughs> Which is what the line is. I don't understand. Cannoneer plus 180 comment. You think he's going to win for all those reasons, but you only give him a 35% chance? So, I mean, it was clear to me what you guys were saying, which is that, like, I was saying, like, what do you expect the line to be? Yeah. Yes. Expect the line to be that. And I think what these guys need to realize is that, like, the line is, it's not only, like, an amalgamation of, like, the public like sentiment but it's also like marketing on behalf of the sports book to try to get you and entice you to bet somebody so you know these guys are basically saying like we think they're gonna win but we think ourselves smart fellows or fart smellers and as a result are ahead of the public so we think the public will be on them i mean no i think a mob off i bet a mob off <laughs> these two think cannoneer is the pick who will win but they think the public will be on a mob off. People see an OV at the end of people's name. It's an automatic minus 80 points right then and there. You have an OV on the end of your name. You are getting 80 yeah, and, you know, points and two people in the were minus saying, like, direction. This guy said, not sure if the content or the banter is entertaining enough for a two-hour video with zero timestamps, Alex. I'm not completely sure you understand betting odds. Well, that, that's where you're wrong. I fucking very much understand betting odds, and I did a whole nerd breakdown of it, Alex will tell you. You're, yeah, and then so I think this is the same guy with three different accounts. One account, Zach Thomas. One account, OMG Taylor Swift 01. One account, Jeremy the Bot. All three accounts have the same opinion. And all three accounts mention that you said Cannoneer has plus 180 odds. It's a little too scammy to me. I think that they're all the same guy, and he comments three times to try to get his points across. Hey, keep commenting three times. I like it. The comments help. That's good. <laughs> But I'm just going to say, I'm on to you. you didn't this is the same guy. I'm looking at this for the first time. It's definitely the same guy. Yeah, Dan, like, you're an English teacher. Like, you know how to, like, plagiarize and be like, yeah, this is fucking plagiarism. It's Luke, definitely the Luke, same guy. Luke, Luke, emergency. You have a pleasant surprise after we end. Oh. Oh. Yes. All right. We got to end right now. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Let's end right now. Let's end right now. No. <laughs> Let's just end right now. We, we did a recap. Let's do the fucking predictions tomorrow. What do you guys say? No. No, 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 I no, want to no, know no, what no. the surprise is. Just tell him, Alex. I can't. I can't say it publicly. Right, we got to keep secret. I'm... We got to keep it secret to keep it safe. But if you know, you know. 
And uh, all right, we got to. I'm move. texting. I'm texting. Damn. You're not going to be too excited about it. Are we still in the pre? We got to end it. We've been doing this an hour. I, honestly, I can't. I can't record tonight. Let's just do tomorrow. <laughs> Are you sure? It's live, bro. Luke. It's super early. No, shut the up. The other shut guy up. said the other guy said that the content is not good enough and that we need to do time stamps. Like, let's just take his opinion and do it. Let's just let's just end. Come on. No, I, I, I can get to tonight. I don't care. I'll end. No, oh. I'm not ending. I'm no, no, no. You can't do Tuesday one. Wednesday. You can't do Tuesday or Wednesday. The audience will be clamoring if we do it, if we give it to them. Oh my gosh. You guys are terrible. You guys are terrible. The people need an episode. We'll do the picks every tomorrow. Monday. We'll do the picks tomorrow. I gotta think on it. I gotta think on this. Let's end. Let's end right now. No, no, no. Dan, you're Dan, not Dan, Dan, Sayonara. Right. Thank you for watching. Oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys. We love you. It's been a great show. Uh, guys, sign up for the Patreon. That's where you can get uh, the open bet sheet. That's where you can get the full breakdown. Give us, a, give it a year. Tazuro Tayara. <laughs> we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. All right. We love you guys. Thank you, Dan. Dan, I appreciate you. You're the man. I don't have you know too much to look forward to these days. We gotta get it in while we can. It's Monday night. We're gonna have fun. Uh, make yourself a drink, everybody. Join us tomorrow. We're gonna break down that two two versus Alex Perez. Enjoy the recap. Enjoy the banter. Thank you very much. We love you. Amen. Uh-huh.